Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom, Rhinox. Rhinox is number 27 in the Kingdom line, and he's part of the third Voyager wave alongside a repack of Cyclonus. This is the uh, third time Rhinox's original form has been visited. You know, you had the original toy, you had the Thrilling 30 toy, and now you have this one. Uh, so this review is going to be very sharply focused on kind of my comparison between this new toy and the Thrilling 30 and which one I actually think is better because it's not very cut and dry, at least not for me. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Rhinox's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll see the instructions, we'll see his Fate Reveal card, which is hopefully something new. Get a lot of repeats in this line. And then we'll see Rhinox himself in both his Beast and Robot modes. We'll be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Rhinox comes in your standard Voyager packaging for Kingdom with the little half window. You can see him front and center, looking very, very nice. Love the gold and the silver here on the chest. On the very front, you can see his Rhino mode with glowy red eyes for reasons. I don't know. Rule of cool, right? And then it wraps around to a picture of his robot mode, which I think looks fantastic. This is one of the better pieces of artwork, I think, for Kingdom. Looks really, really good. It's very detailed. The top of the box has a maximal symbol along with some other random symbols, his line serial number there. Then on the back, you get renders for Rhinox, looking quite a bit shinier than the finished product, sadly. Uh, but you can see he takes 35 steps to transform, so he's no slouch in the transformation, which is good. Like him, uh, you know, nice and complex and interesting. Uh, one thing you may notice, and I promise I'm going to harp on this, so hope you're ready for that, is, you know, he's got the fake rhino jaw chest piece here, which, you know, they did that to give it the wider appearance from the show. However, you can also just see the rhino's jaw on the back, so it's very disappointing that they didn't, like, tuck that away to at least give the illusion that his jaw becomes the chest piece, you know, in the transformation. They're just like, nah, he's just gonna have a rhino head and then just an extra jaw-like thing on his chest because, you know, we don't feel like doing anything about that, I suppose. But anyway, we can see the cool little cave painting thing of the rhino mode there. And then on the side, we get our standard kingdom side panel. All right, our Fate Reveal card is another Dinobot one, and I think I know which one this is. Pretty sure. I'm excited if it is. Oh, it is. All right, look at this. Finally, not a repeat. So, Dynomus. It might be hard to tell with the lighting, but look at that. It's like a souped up, very uh, almost Unicron trilogy looking version of Dinobot. And here it says, Becomes Dynomus, Herald of Unicron. Makes sense, right? So basically he takes Megatron's place in getting some grand upgrade to becoming this Super Herald. It's a really, really cool idea. Um, I doubt we'll ever actually see a figure of this, but it is kind of neat that they actually went another way to draw up what that would look like. So I dig it. I dig it. I'm very happy to actually get a new card and not just yet another, like, becomes a Maximal or something like that. And here we get our instructions for Rhinox. You can see a nice render of them right here on the front. Got the faction symbol, name, branding, all that stuff. Looks like... Is that a... I might be painting with chain guns there in the background. Kind of looks like them. If so, that's neat. Okay, so here... We get uh, wielding his weapons or storing them on his backside. And then they go right into the transformation from robot to rhino. Yeah, quite a bit going on here, huh? That's good, that's good. Glad he's not too simple. Uh, okay, you can put his... Oh, that's neat. You can put the uh, Chain Guns of Doom together for storage in the Rhino mode. Uh, yeah, it looks like he cleans up pretty well. Look, his stomach's not open. They close the stomach up, so that's nice. And there's your finished product for the Rhino. Here is the aforementioned Rhino mode. And one thing you'll notice about this is it's quite a brick compared to modern toys that doesn't have a whole lot of articulation. So it does have a jaw that does open and close, which is cool. 
Oddly enough, the teeth inside the jaw are painted silver, despite the fact that his bottom jaw doesn't actually become chest kibble. So, weird call. You'd think they just paint him white. He's got some nice horns here. The head kind of can move up and down a little bit, but not very much. The legs, they can kind of move, but they're really meant to stay solid because lifting them up just reveals like robot kibble and stuff. Looks weird. They can rotate for whatever purpose that serves. Back ones can kind of rotate too and move around a little bit. That's about it. Tails just solidly cast here. So, I mean, he looks like a rhino. He does look like a realistic rhinoceros. So I'll give him that. And despite the fact that he's just kind of this tanky little brick, I mean, I guess that's what rhinos really are anyway, right? If we flip him over, we can see the weapon storage. You get his little chain guns of doom right there between the hind legs. You can see a whole bunch of robo kibble, fake jaw bit here. And yeah, I mean, he's your typical beast former, right? He's mostly open on the bottom. You know, if they're gonna hide away the robot kibble, that's where they're gonna hide it. But that's no different from, you know, say a, a car transformer, right? Most of the robo stuff is on the bottom of the car. And I'll say it is a competent looking beast mode. I do like it for what it is. You can see he's keeping with the general kingdom design philosophy of using a realistic beast mode. So it doesn't quite look like the old toy, doesn't look like the more cartoon based Thrilling 30 toy, just trying its best to look like a realistic rhinoceros. And it does a good job. The proportions are good. It's got this realistic kind of freckling pattern here on the skin, which I don't know if that's supposed to be like actual skin discoloration or like mud or something, but it does give it a very down to earth National Geographic kind of vibe. So I dig it. And it does have paint where it needs it, right? It has the horns, has the red eyes. That's a funny thing, right? They're going for realistic beast modes, but they kind of copy the old Beast Wars, you know, philosophy of like just glowing eyes for the beast. It's got a painted tongue and teeth, even though the teeth are silver. It's got painted like little toenails, whatever you call those. I'm not sure what you call it. Rhino's toenails. Are there's toenails? I don't know. So it works. It's a nice little beast mode. And I got to say, I do like it. Now we get a group shot of Rhinox with the two previous versions of the character. So on the left, you get the original Beast Wars toy, more specifically the 10th anniversary recolor, which is a bit more screen accurate than the original. And you can see very alien looking, got really freaky looking eyes, almost dinosaur-like proportions. And, you know, in my opinion, honestly, kind of one of the worst beast modes out of the original, you know, first wave of Beast Wars toys, which is a shame because Rhinox is such a cool character. But it does have a nice shiny paint job, we'll give it that. And yeah, just a squat little rhino, you know, mid-90s toy, so has all that technology or lack thereof. Then we get our Thrilling 30 toy, which is one of my favorites. Look at this bad boy. It comes a lot closer to the CGI model for Rhinox Beast Mode, though it's not, you know, exactly the same. It also kind of blends a more realistic look in that rhino mode. Different proportions for sure. Um, much bigger head compared to the body, a little less tanky, a little more lean. Does have the character's black eyes for the rhino mode though. And unlike our new kingdom toy, this bottom jaw does actually become part of the robot mode. So it does have like the gold, you know, tech detailings on the inside of the mouth, which you may consider that, you know, a point against the toy for having a slightly less, you know, realistic looking mouth in the beast mode. I mean, I'm not gonna hold it against it because it does allow for him to have a proper transformation. I will say that the horns on the Kingdom toy are a bit better because they're actually separated, like they should be instead of being one piece like this, like that's not how a rhino's horn should look. So, you know, I I'm gonna say, and I'm kind of surprised that I'm saying this, I, I think that the, uh, the Kingdom Rhinox has a better beast mode overall. It might be a little bit less screen accurate than the Thrilling 31, but I think it just comes off looking a good deal better. And it does remind me a bit more of an actual rhino than either of these two. Honestly, these two, they kind of just look like dinosaurs to me. They really do. All right, now it's time to transform Rhinox. So we start by kind of separating his hindquarters here. Let's open this up a little bit. That's going to enable you to take his Chain Guns of Doom out of here. You can get him out. Or just fumble around with him like me. OK. 
Come on, little guys. Let's go. There we go. Alright, you can see they're attached face to face here. You just kind of gently pull them apart. See how they look. They're painted nicely, I'll give them that. But they're still kind of boring as an accessory because they don't spin or anything. They're just solid pieces here. Alright, next we're going to go ahead and pop these little panels free. I'm going to kind of turn them inward like this to get them loose and then just kind of lift them up and out of the way like so. Separate all this. Now you want to take your tail pieces here and swing these little flaps in like that. Just get them out of the way. For both of these, you're gonna free this leg from this lower panel. If we'll let you, come on. All right, kind of get that up and off. Lift these out of the way. All right, you're gonna start kind of unfolding this. Get the foot out from under this little shoulder or back panel here. Same thing on the side. Separate them. Get this free. All right. This part's kind of a little pain. You gotta swing this in, kind of get it out of the way. And then bring it up at the same time. All right, so you're gonna do it like this. Might take a couple tries. All right, we're gonna go ahead, lift this up, spin it in, push it more like this. Hold this in, like so. All right, we'll try the same thing here. Get it like that, fold, let's go ahead, rotate, drop, push this in, all right, trying to get everything nice and straightened out here. Now the feet, we're going to untab them, gotta rotate everything down, out, get the feet in the normal position, and bring all this inward, like so. Just gonna push these so they more or less pop into place like this. All right, so do the same thing here. Bring that in. Close this up on it. All right, so we got our legs. We're getting there. All right, now this bit. Let's pull it down. Open it up. Push back in. rhino head area we're going to pull away and then you got kind of a two hinge action here you're going to swing this hinge out do it like this turn the head around naturally these pushed up against the fake jaw kibble turn the arms and lift these forearm panels up fold the fists out and they're going to contact the panels a little bit they don't get a lot of clearance so you have to kind of push past them a little bit. There you go. Same thing here. Alright, here we go. Get most of the way there. Alright, then lastly, you're just bringing the rhino head area down. Now there's two things you can do here. Uh, we talked about how, you know, he's got the fake jaw on the chest and then a bottom jaw still visible behind his head. Now you can, while you have this out, swing this jaw in. You may have to pull it away to keep it from scratching the robot head. But you can do it like that and then swing it down. And it'll get rid of the extra jaw. It'll kind of hide it away. But then you get this really unsightly little, like, off-white bar which forms the horns. So... It kind of ends up looking worse, in my opinion, to have it like this. So honestly, even though it bugs me, because you can see two different jaws on him, I'd rather keep it up, bring this down, and then push this in as far as it goes, and just kind of recess it. And here we go. Here is our robot mode for Rhinox. Get it all posed up, looking nice. All right. Then of course he's got his chain guns of doom, and you can do two things with these. 
One, you have that storage option where you just take their handles, you plug them into these five mil ports on the back kibble here, and he can store them nice and out of the way, and it works out pretty well. They don't really contact anything, get in the way at all. Or you can have them wield them, like Rhinox is meant to. Can't have Rhinox without his chain guns. Signature weapon. Get it in there. All right. So, get him a little more battle ready. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. I'll tell you, he looks good for what he is. He is a good-looking Transformer. At least, mostly from the front. Because if we go ahead and we turn around here, you can see he's very, very empty in the back. You get all this exposed right here. Kind of makes him look like a, uh, a Lego Bionicle character, doesn't it? Like this looks like the back of the torso piece. If any of you guys have ever messed with Bionicle. Uh, I can't say that I'm, I'm super crazy about that. I'll tell you that. That back area is definitely one of my least favorite things about this toy. I also don't really like how the legs come together. You can see they're really kind of gappy here. You see all this kibble kind of tucked away inside the leg. Not so great. And then the feet. Now the feet are nice and poseable. You have ankle rocking and tilt, which is awesome. However, it, they're really like weird and unnecessary looking. They don't look much like how Rhinox's feet are supposed to look. They're supposed to be a bit more, uh, I guess, less oblong, more round. And there's no reason they couldn't have been that. They just decided to mold them this way for whatever reason. Give them like, looks like his rhino mode would have big old clown feet since these are fake feet kibble, since the real ones are like tucked away. I don't know. It, it's a weird artistic choice. And then the thing that bothers me most about, again, artistic choices is the head design. There's something about it. It just feels off. It feels kind of too squat. If that makes sense. Uh, really plain looking because it's just kind of that flat almost olive green color it does thankfully have the, the gold highlights but then they opted to not include rhinox's like one of in my opinion most signature aspects of his robot design and that would be the maximal symbols on each side of his head now that might seem like a small detail but if you ever watch beast wars i mean they're very prominent anytime you look at rhinox you can see those maximal symbols there right on his little helmet area why they didn't include that, I don't know. Maybe it was a budget thing. They felt like they, they blew too much budget on the, the skin freckles or whatever, the gold, the silver. I'm not sure, but not including that, it might seem really small and really nitpicky, but I think really throws him off. If they had put those on there, I think it would have made the head sculpt work a lot better. Now, I've heard rumors that this design right here, the reason it looks you know so different from what we see in like the mainframe CGI model even in areas where it doesn't have to look different, is because this figure is at least partly based on Rhinox's uh, character model in the Transformers Forge to Fight mobile game, which, you know the thing about mobile games, they don't tend to stack up to more graphically high-end games, right? They tend to have pretty low poly counts and stuff in the models, and the characters, you know, their proportions and their details kind of suffer because of that. So if that's what they were emulating with this, First of all, I don't know why they would use that as a base for anything. I mean, is that really going to be your source of inspiration as a mobile game? I don't know. But it probably accounts for some of the strange changes that were made to the design that really did not have to be there. Now, with my nitpicks out of the way, if we get a look at this guy, we can see his posability. He's got the ball-jointed head, which is pretty much perfect as far as the friction. He's got... Butterflying shoulders because of the transformation. You don't see a lot of guys with butterfly joints, except like bigger transformers. Universal shoulders here. He's got a single bend elbow, which sadly can't break a 90 because of the bulk. He does have a bicep swivel right at the elbow. He gets no, no wrist swivel or anything like that, which is unfortunate. Does get a waist swivel, though his kibble tends to get in the way of that. Universal hips. Thigh swivel, though again more of a knee swivel than thigh. Single bend knees, which again, sadly can't break a 90. And we already mentioned the ankle rocking and tilting. So he's most of the way there. Um, and then what he lacks in a few departments like the wrist, he makes up for with butterfly joints. I mean, how cool is that? You almost never see that on a smaller toy. Um, so as an action figure, he's pretty solid. And as a transforming figure, as a Transformers toy, he is good. Like, he is a good Transformer. My, my biggest issue with him is just a lot of the unnecessary changes made to the design. 
Also, the puny weapons. I mean, again, well painted, but so, so small. And they don't turn. They don't do anything. I mean, even the original toy had spinning blades, even though he only had one chain gun type weapon. Still, it does bug me. Okay, and here's our robot mode comparison. Again, we have our Beast Wars toy on the left, Thrilling 30 in the middle, and Kingdom on the right. So I'll start by just stating the obvious. The Beast Wars toy and the Kingdom toy have almost nothing in common. Like, obviously, the Beast Wars toy serves as the inspiration for, you know, every iteration of the character's design, because it's the first one. But just the way it works, the colors, all that, the transformation, the actual weapons used, because the old toy gets, uh, like, a tail sword, and he gets, like, one spinning chainsaw thing that's not really even a, a gun. It's just a spinning weapon with, like, little mace balls on the end. I mean, it's a very, very different take than what, you know, eventually became the Rhinox that we know and love. So, yeah, the design has evolved to where these two, I mean, could really just be separate characters at this point. Now, the Beast Wars toy and the Thrilling 30, I think, have a bit more in common, especially when it comes to their colors. They're not the same, but they are closer in hue than, you know, what you see between these two. And they also actually do utilize the Rhino bottom jaw as the chest ornament. Now, of course, that does make even our Thrilling 30 toy a little bit less screen accurate in that one regard. In the show, the Rhino's jaw did, you know, kind of morph and stretch out to become a full chest covering, much like what you do see on the Kingdom toy. So there is that hit for accuracy with the Thrilling 30. But then, in virtually every other way, the Thrilling 30 toy looks far more screen accurate than our new toy. He even gets those really awesome maximal symbols on the head that I mentioned. Now, the downside to the Thrilling 30 toy is that structurally, it's not very stable. It's got very loose legs. It's got a hip section that kind of collapses in on itself. The arms, they don't stay up very well. Um, it's a very finicky toy. So it looks great. It is a gorgeous representation of Rhinox. And still, for all its faults, my favorite Rhinox toy when it comes to being a display piece and being something that looks like the character how I envision him. Plus, check out his chainsaws. Not only are they big, but they actually spin, and they're awesome. Or chain guns, I mean. He's got a chainsaw, he's got chain guns. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous figure. But he kind of suffers the same problem that like modern masterpiece toys have, is that he's all style and not as much substance. You know, new masterpiece toys they do a fantastic job of emulating the characters on screen appearance, right down to like the finest details, but they tend to be very fragile, they tend to be very finicky, lots of moving parts that are kind of overcomplicated, and yeah, they, they don't always work as well as they should because they're kind of over-engineered, and I think that's what happened with the Thrilling 30 Rhinox. Plus, tolerances just aren't really that great. The hip joints in particular could stand to be a lot tighter than they are. So... I think it's really a toss-up. You notice I'm really not talking much about the original toy, because again, it's doing its own thing, and, you know, of all the original Beast Wars toys, it's not the greatest, I won't lie. Rhinox, as iconic as he is, did not have the best toy. The Rhino mode's really alien-looking, the robot mode is kind of cool, it's kind of got like a samurai motif going on, but it's tons of kibble and just not stellar, so we're just going to kind of ignore this poor guy for now. But these two here... I'll say that if you want a Rhinox that looks much more like the character does in the TV show, and you want something that just looks really good on a shelf, I think Thrilling 30 is still your best option. However, if you want a Transformer that can pose well, that is very solidly engineered, you may want to go with the Kingdom one. Even though I think the colors aren't great, you know, I think that the pea soup green is just an awful choice, really. I mean, it doesn't reflect anything that we've come to expect from Rhinox. He's always known for having kind of that, that jade, you know, robotic kibble there. Um, you know, the colors are weird, the changes to his proportions and his details, and then the open back, you know, that that's just really ugly. Um, you know, he's not as pretty to look at. He's really not. He does a little bit more than the Thrilling 30 toy fit in with the aesthetic of the New Kingdom toys. Though, because the Kingdom toys are also largely screen accurate, particularly in robot mode, either one, I think, would look pretty good in your collection. And they're both almost the exact same height, too. 
Um, so it's not like scale is really gonna be a big issue. They're pretty much the same when it comes to lining up with your other Beast Wars characters. So overall, it's a tough call. I think I'm personally more attached to the Thrilling 30 toy because it looks like Rhinox to me, but I can't ignore the merits of the Kingdom toy either because it is a very solid figure. And before we get to the last segment, I want to kind of point something out. So our old Rhinox toy, if you're wondering why he has these little frills around his head, it's because he has that whole mutant head or battle mask gimmick that the old Beast Wars toys had. He has something like that. And it has me thinking, what is this new Kingdom toy going to be recolored or retooled into, if anything? Normally, it's not like Hasbro to just leave money on the table and, you know, not recolor a mold at least once. However, Rhinox doesn't really have a history of being recolored into other characters. Like, sure, you get, like, the Fox Kids repaint and all that. But as far as, you know, doing something new and different with the character, it happens very rarely. Now, in today's market, you almost never get a toy that's only used once. So that does have me wondering what they can do. And the mutant head on the original toy gives me an idea. They could, as, like, a Selex or something, if they want to get a real deep cut in, recolor this Rhinox toy as the Happy Meal character, Rhino, who really is just a simplified Rhinox utilizing the mutant head design. So I could see that happening, right? Like a, a very gray and orange with, I guess, some red on them, like Rhinox retool, and just give him a new head that looks like this one. And, you know, it's a very obscure character, but what else are you going to turn him into, honestly? I mean, unless you do some insane retooling and maybe change his Rhino mode into, like, a dinosaur mode and... Make him like a Beast Wars 2 character or something. I'm not sure what else you can get out of this. But I am hopeful that they do something with it and he's not just a one and done. Because I think it's always a shame when they don't, you know, use something to its potential. We'll see how it goes. In fact, if you have an idea or, you know, thought of something I have and I'd love for you guys to share it in the comment section. And this completes our look at Kingdom Rhinox. Now this toy, I'm more conflicted on than I am for most of the Kingdom, like Beast Wars updates. Um, I don't love everything about it. Now, it is a solid figure. I already talked about the posability and the stability are better than anything that's come before. But a lot of the aesthetic choices, especially like the giant holes in the back here, the little tiny chain guns, and then the weird alterations made to his design that move him further away from like really both toy and show model, I find kind of puzzling. Again, like the mobile game inspiration baffles me like why would you ever model a high-end toy well you know, i guess medium end toy after a mobile game like character model i don't know um so weird choices were made uh, as far as you know whether or not i recommend this if you don't have the thrilling 30 rhinox then yeah absolutely if you don't have an updated rhinox toy and you need something to go on a generations you know style beast war shelf he is more than good enough. I mean, he's very obviously Rhinox when you look at him, despite any of the changes made. No mistaken for anything else. Uh, if you do have the Thrilling 30 Rhinox, or especially if you have, like, the Legends recolor from Takara, which is even better, this is going to be a lot tougher. Um, it'll really come down to your priorities as a collector. Do you want a figure that's very solid and very fun to play with and very poseable like this? Then you should probably get this one. However, you want something that looks a lot fancier and much more in line with how the character is commonly depicted, the Thrilling 30 or Legends is probably your best bet. Or, you know, if you're a completionist, you can just buy both, like me. Um, so, yeah, he's not as highly recommended as some of the other Beast Wars updates we've seen recently. I kind of put him in the same vein as, like, Cheetor, where, you know, engineering-wise, he's obviously better than the old toy because technology's advanced so much more when it comes to toy making. But aesthetically, he's a little more on the fence where there's choices that I just really don't love. I mean, there are things about this guy that just really are a turnoff to me. So he's, you know, kind of mildly recommended, a little more recommended if you don't already have the Thrilling 30. Of course, that is just my opinion on this Rhinox, so now I want to know what you all think of him. Do you think I'm being too hard on this toy, or do you agree that he's a little bit disappointing? Um, or, you know, do you think he's better than the Thrilling 30? I know some people have said they actually just really do like him more in, like, every way. And that's totally cool, too. Uh, any and all feedback is always welcome in that comment section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. 
If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this review of the new Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Kingdom Voyager Class Rhinox. With all that said, I will see you next time.